Hey, everybody. Welcome. Today is Wednesday, May 22nd. Uh, so welcome. Hi, guys. And we're glad to have all of you who are with us live. And those of you who are watching on replay, glad to be with you. We are now at about, I think, about 75 days until the July exam. It's the inexorable march, isn't it? We just keep getting closer and closer. And then suddenly it's there. And people are like, oh, wait, what was I doing? It, it really is. And I always talk about how future you is going to appreciate that current you is actually getting stuff done right now. Even though it's May, this is the time to get started. And I'm a little concerned. I know all of our coaches are nodding their heads. I know some of you are studying quietly, but we're not seeing a whole lot of activity. And I think we need to see a little more right now. I'd like to see people up in their game a little bit, don't you think? like the group coaching, maybe people were a little bit busy in May, but now's the time that the law students are all like graduating, right? And so if you're not, we have a lot of non-traditional students that aren't graduating, right? So you yeah. got to get on par with them, right? You got to, if not ahead of them, because they might be studying full-time and you might have jobs, kids, et cetera. We have all the group coaching, June's mindset coaching, and it's really great. And when we've had five people in my coaching, we've had really good conversations and just like really good stuff. And it's a real bonus to be in a coaching call with Tracy or Amanda or June, and there's only five of you. So take advantage of this. I think that's going to be the theme today is take advantage of these resources because you want to have all the tools in your toolkit. And if you wait until mid to late June, it's just tough to get all of that working. So today we're going to talk about some bar exam news. We're going to talk about uh, additional resources and tools. And uh, Tracy's going to talk about cleaning her closets. Not mine. Not mine. Oh, cleaning the closet? Cleaning your closet. Not yours. Oh, no, no. no just take God. Okay. All right. Make here. That's a terrifying thought. Oh, my closet. Pervert you know, your Yes. Oh, the proverbial your closet. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get to all that. We have a couple of questions from students. We're gonna cover those as well. Good stuff. And by the way, we don't have Amanda on every week. It's a special treat when we get her here. So thank you for being here. I want to talk with all of you for a minute about what's going on in California because I think it's got implications. Certainly has implications for February 2025, and I think it's got implications nationally as well. You remember that last week we talked about the proposal before the California bar to go to remote testing and to leave the NCBE, the multi-state bar exam, and create a new multiple choice test created by Kaplan. That proposal went to the California bar examiner trustees last week, and they tabled it. This is not very helpful when you're trying to figure out what the heck is going on in the world. I've had conversations in this past week with representatives of NCBE, as well as some other bar review company representatives trying to figure out what this new landscape might look like, because I think it is going to be a new landscape. And I, this is what I wanted to talk about today. At this moment, nothing's changed officially. And yet a lot of stuff I think potentially is changing. So for those of you that don't know what California is talking about doing, is that instead of having everyone come to a center, a testing center throughout the state and taking the multi-state bar exam administered by the National Conference of Bar Examiners, the same test that everyone takes across the country, California is run out of money. Their bar trust fund is going to be broke next year and broke to the tune of like multiple millions of dollars. And so the proposal was, we will go back to remote testing. And Amanda, you remember remote testing during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, I was like, I got to take it in person, which was a huge thing. But I remember people in yeah. my cohort didn't. And people in my yeah. cohort yeah. also talked about it because they retook right after the at yeah. home, in home testing. Yeah. And, there, and there were a couple of problems. There were a lot of problems. One problem was that the technology wasn't quite good enough then. This was 20. When was it? 2021? Is that right? I don't remember. Whenever COVID was. Pardon? 2020. 2020. Okay. So we had a two-year period where we were doing remote testing. And the problem had to do with cheating. 
And so they had this software that was supposed to tell if your eyes were looking up in the room or somewhere else. And we had all these rules about you couldn't have anybody come to the door and you couldn't be any books in the room and you had to be in a sterile kind of environment. And so all of that was going on. When you talk to NCBE, their position was then and it is today that you cannot, with the current technology, protect against cheating. And they felt there was a lot of cheating during that time period. The problem that I raised was there was also a lot of accusations of cheating that weren't fair, that weren't accurate. So given that structure, the NCB said, if you're going to administer our multi-state bar exam, you got to do it in a test location like Oakland or LA or wherever it might be. Well, California said, that's a problem for us because we got to have a whole bunch of these locations and they're expensive because it's California. So California then said to the NCBE, can we give your multi-state bar exam remotely? And the NCBE said, no, you can't. So then California said, all right, we'll write our own test. And this is the weird part to me. They said, who could write a test for us? How about the bar review company? And they went to Kaplan. And they said to Kaplan, could you write a multi, a multi-state kind of test, a multiple choice test. And Kaplan of course said, sure, we can do it. And then I think at some point somebody said, this kind of looks like a conflict of interest. So Kaplan then said, we will prepare California bar takers. Tracy, you could take the California bar in Colorado. Amanda, you could take the California bar in Massachusetts. And Kaplan could theoretically sell you a course because they're not, you're not in California. So then it got a little more complicated and the question became, what's Kaplan going to do? And that still hasn't been cleared up. So last week, the board of trustees got this proposal to have Kaplan prepare the questions and to go to remote testing and the board of trustees. And here's the key for all this to happen in February, 2025. And the board of trustees said, oh, we don't know if we can do that. And so we're going to table it, but then they didn't say what they were going to do. What do you do if you're a California bar taker? Couple of things that, as we've been talking about it here, first of all, and I'm, Tracy said this last week, and I just want to really hammer this home. If you are registered to take the July, 2024 California bar exam, take the exam, do not defer. I you still believe that Tracy. Jim, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Go with the thing that it's because, called, because we don't know what's going to We really don't. Is it possible that there will be remote testing in February of 2025 in California? Maybe, but I'm not sure at what point they're going to be able to figure that out and when they're going to do it. And then number two, what will the tech be that you got to have for it? And then number three, most important, what are the questions? Now, our approach to the questions, and I've been talking to other bar review, I think the consensus in the industry is we're going to continue to prepare as though it's the MBE. That is, we don't see any signs that Kaplan is going to go away from the seven testable subjects, that what they're going to do is take their question bank, which was never the licensed questions, and they're just going to drop their question bank in instead of the MBE, which means it should mirror the MBE, but not as well done. I think that's the essence of it. So... That's the way that we're proceeding. The problem, of course, is that Kaplan isn't going to license their questions, certainly not to other bar reviews, and they're not supposed to sell their question. So I don't know how people are going to prepare other than to take and prepare for the MBE. Massive, not, not fun. There are three other states, Florida, Texas, and New York, that are all big question marks about what they're going to do with the next generation exam. I think as a bar exam watcher, I can tell you that Florida is very likely to go with this new, we're going to just call it the Kaplan test. I think New York and Texas, which are part of the UBE right now, might very well choose to do this as well. The argument from the NCBE is that these big states in the UBE, the uniform bar exam, will stay with that test because of portability. The question really is, how much does New York want people to be able to transfer in and out? How much does Texas want people to transfer in and out? I don't know, Amanda. <laughs> you've used portability. You've seen it. 
but I don't think the bar examiners have been jumping up and down saying we love portability. Do you get that feeling? No, I, I don't get the feeling at all. I think if I think if anything, the bar examiners in the states are pretty protective and wanting you to really, even in states that there is a shortage of attorneys. Yeah. I think Vermont might be one of those states. It's pretty hard to transfer into Vermont. I think you actually have to take, even if you have a transferable score or something like you have to actually live there or then yeah. take it in, while sitting in Vermont. And don't quote yeah. me on that. I'm just saying that in the states I've looked into yeah. waving into, it's not an easy process. Right. There, pretty protective over it. And I'm not sure why. I'm really not. I know that all 50 states laws are different, but we know that the, we know that that's not what the bar exam tests, right? It's not, certainly not testing state specific laws. The only thing I can really think of is money because if you do pass and just do our character and fitness, make sure we're not running for many disciplinary issues and we should be good, but that's not the case. So I don't know why, but I don't. And I would think a state like New York and Texas, which is popular states take the bar in, they are going to want to control even more. It's not like they need attorney. And even states that I would say have a need because there's a shortage of attorneys, it doesn't seem like they're opening the gates. That's right. And so given that, I think that's a pretty weak argument to think that those states are going to stay in the UBE, particularly as we go to the next gen exam. It gets more complicated because NextGen currently only has, was it 18 jurisdictions, Tracy, that have signed up? Yes. And they're all it's small all jurisdictions. Small. Can, as somebody said to me in the Harvard industry this week, the NCB has never met a deadline and that they couldn't push back. So I think that this idea that we're going to have the next gen in a big way in 2026 probably isn't likely. I mean, it, they're already moving back to 2028 in a lot of jurisdictions. And so I think what's a real possibility here is that we are going to see a bifurcated bar exam world. We're going to see next gen or some version of it in small jurisdictions. And we're going to see what I'm calling the Kaplan test in big jurisdictions. And I think the NCBE is in real danger of having their lunch eaten. I think this is a real moment, a watershed moment in this industry. And I don't have a dog in this fight. I just think that the reality is that if you're a bar taker, the world is going to be very weird for the next few years. And the faster you get in and take this exam, the better off you are. We know how to help you pass the legacy exam. We don't have any materials, and not just us. Nobody has materials for the next gen exam yet. There's just, it's just stuff out there. And while it might seem more appealing to be able to take the exam at home, I can tell you, and if you talk to anybody that took the exam during the COVID years, it was traumatic for most people. There were so many restrictions. There were so many potential problems. There were so many technological problems. People computers had to be much different than they are going into a testing site. So there's a whole lot of stuff going on. You, If you are watching or listening today, take the exam in July 2024 if you're a California taker. If you're a Florida, New York, Texas taker, take the legacy exam as soon as you can. Do not wait for all of these other things to come out because there will be, you know, I say this as one of the OGs, it takes time for everybody to catch up to what the exam is. And these exams are going to change and it's going to be a different world. That's cheery news, isn't it? But still important yeah. to consider. <laughs> and also another reason that and a lot of you for your why, which was shared with me, do you want to be part of the bar and be part of these conversations yeah. about how we admit people to the bar and what does fairness and equity look like? And we need a lot of your voices on the other side. So it's another reason to get to the other side before and while these changes are being made so you can be a part of that. Yeah. We're doing a lot to try and stay connected and involved. I can tell you that the bar review industry is not happy with, there's two things happening. Kaplan's now obviously doing something that's different, but there's a company called Access Lex and they're doing functionally the same thing for next gen. And there are bar reviews. So you've got these weird conflicts of interest coming up that are, I think, creating a not level playing field. And I think that's part of the problem. Tracy, yeah, so any other thoughts? Or do you just want me to move? No, oh, man, no, I think. Ronald, no, I was just asking. So we're going to, 
uh, and maybe I just missed it when you said it, that was the first thing that came to my mind, the conflict of interest, because it seems like one prep company would have a advantage that is really can't be seen. And then they have this not direct monopoly, but I mean, in terms of, we talk about cost all the time and Celebration Bar Review being very cognizant of that. That could really have an access issue, an access to the exam by virtue of Kaplan could charge whatever they want for it. Not saying they will, I don't have any like thing, but it it is, you're going to pay for that, even if it's not the better way. So it right, seems right. Bit... And Access Lux has the same possibility with Next Gen. And to be perfectly candid, neither of those companies has an interest in working with repeat or non traditional bar takers. They are almost exclusively working with first time takers. So if you're a repeat bar taker, the world looks even crazier. We're your advocate. I mean, that. And we have a voice in that world. And we continue to advocate with the NCBE and with the bar examiner. But this is a strange time. This feels as weird to me as COVID did in terms of the bar exam. So we'll see. I may be overreacting. It may be much ado about nothing, but my spidey sense tells me that we're in for a big set of changes here. So the thing that we want to impart to you all is don't sit on the sidelines. If you are through law school, and you want to be barred in California or Nevada, because that's the other state that is tagging yes, a beer. Exactly. Register. Go ahead and pay for your bar exam now, because what's driving this is that California is running out of money. So one thing is pretty clear is that the cost is going to go up to apply for being barred in California. I don't know about Nevada, but California for sure. So... If you're wishy-washy and you're thinking, maybe I'll just sit out for a couple of years and see what happens. Don't do that. Go now. Go now. That's the other thing. I don't know how they would sign anybody up for February 2025. It's already June of 2024. It doesn't even make any sense. So let us worry about it. And you just go ahead and sign up. If you get ready for California, you can take it somewhere else if you need to. June, did you have something to add? I do. I'm already starting to see deferrals come in. And here they're all saying, in my plain speak, is especially for all my students, and I have a bunch of them that like control. Okay, and we'll put it that way. You like control, you pick your dragon. Right now, we know how to slay the dragon. Everybody on this call knows how to slay the dragon. Okay? And so it's a slayable dragon. If you get scared and you defer, we don't know yet how to play the dragon. So you're taking a big risk. And all this time that you have input into your studies could be com- completely different. So don't let a little fear right now, a little anxiety right now, talk you out of this. Get on group coaching. We'll work you past that fear. You're still going to have some. It- it's fine. Use it to your advantage to push through. But what I'm hearing is you've got a better chance now than you're probably going to have in the future. And if it were me, I would bet now instead of later with the unknown. Yeah, that's absolutely the consensus. I don't think anybody on our team says you should wait. So thanks that you're putting it in plain speed. I think that's good. So there you go. And look, if you're scared, take June's mindset, uh, calming the chaos. It will help you. So we're here for you. In the same vein, one of the things that we have been trying to do is to figure out how to add more tools to your toolkit to help you be successful. We're going to announce something today that I'm pretty excited about. Mark June 15th on your calendar. On June 15th, we're going to do what we call a level up day. And on this level up day, what we're going to do is offer you the opportunity to buy one hour training segments that run the 15th is a Saturday, I believe. And you're going to have the opportunity to register for anywhere from one to eight segments and a hundred dollars a segment to work with our coaches on specific things in very small settings. We will have probably not more than three people in any particular grouping. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about e-practice, MPT, photo reading, time management, essays, mind mapping, 
lots of stuff. This is a chance to just get an hour. And if you only want one hour, it's a hundred bucks. If you want the whole day, it's 800 bucks, but it's got eight segments to work through. It's like a boot camp, but it's really smaller and it's really focused. Um, in boot camp and in virtual boot camp, we did a lot of teaching. We did a lot of presentation. This is literally working through specifics. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do this. We will make this available starting tomorrow. You will see the option and we'll send you an email and sign up for one, sign up for two, sign up for seven, whatever you want and pick what you want. It's going to be first come first third. So again, it's June 15th and we're going to start at eight o'clock mountain turn. 10 o'clock in the east, and then we'll finish up by four o'clock in mountain time, six o'clock in the east. So getting new. What this means is if you sign up for eight o'clock NBE practice, you're going to be working with Jackson. If you sign up for essay review choice at one o'clock, you're going to be working with me, but we're limiting mm -hmm. these segments to just two or three students. And if we get more than that, then the other one of us will take those students on. So you're going to get one of them, we talk. So these are work sessions. We're expecting you to come with an essay, an MPT, if you're working on that, your calendar, if you want to work on time management and to take it seriously. And we're going to work very intensively on whatever the area is that you need the help. So we're excited about it. I think it's got real potential. We'll see what happens here, but this is a, an opportunity to get some of that at an affordable scale. I think that's really the point we're trying to get. You can, and we encourage you to sign up for personal coaching with Amanda or personal coaching with Tracy, 10 calls with either of them. Very helpful as we've been talking about eight calls with me, but this is another tool. And it, I think it's important to point out this doesn't replace any of that. This is just something extra, and we're trying to make it affordable because we know that finances are challenging for people, okay? Watch for the email tomorrow. We will give you the links to sign up. Again, first come, first served. So two opportunities. One is one ends tonight for the coaching calls. Tomorrow, it'll be level up day. There you go. I think it will be fun and very helpful. I loved what Amanda had to say about the beauty of buying either the five coaching calls or the 10 or 12, and there's a couple of them that are open hours. So if you needed more work and you were the only one that signed up for that, we would work with you on those hours too. But I think what she said about building on your past experience is so important that when you're working on trying to learn how to write essays, writing at one time doesn't really kind of, it doesn't really do it. You really need to work on this aspect of FLA or this aspect of going through your library and MPT or this particular way of accessing your selective intuition, the photo reading, getting it down. You can't just do it as a one-off. This is not meant for people who have not started to do anything yet. This is meant for people who are serious about taking the bar in six weeks from then and are well into their studies. There's, I think I'm going to call an audible here, Tracy and Amanda. I think what we're going to do is go to Tracy's discussion about cleaning with closets. If we don't get to Greg's video, we'll release that as a separate video soon. Many of you were at boot camp and got to see him. It's a great video, a great story. Let's jump over to you. Are you ready to go, Trace? I am ready to go. Uh, and this is okay. a... This little talk I'm going to have today is a do as I say, not as I do. So let's take a look at perhaps what your workspace looks like. Does it maybe look like this with papers all over the floor and things coming in from outside? And it looks like total chaos to me there. It also looks pretty unattended. Or maybe your, maybe your office looks like this with... Everything up on whiteboards, which is great, but papers and books and things all around can't find your way. Does this look maybe like your workspace? I see some ramen noodles uh, there underneath the desk. It's a healthy way to eat. 
not. Maybe it's just stacks and stacks of things that you have used to get yourself organized, but they're just sitting there one on top of the other. That's what my office looks like, unfortunately. Right now. Oh, maybe it should look like this. Do as I say, not as I do. It's time for you to take a couple of hours today, tomorrow, over this weekend, clean up your workspace. Now, why would I bother talking about this? It's because if you have a cleaned up workspace, you're going to have a cleaned up mind. You're going to be ready to do your work. You're going to have things organized in terms of what you want to do next. You're going to have your mind maps all in one notebook for courts, for example, and in a separate notebook for contracts. And you're going to know exactly where those are and they're going to be in order. Because the more stuff you stack up, the harder it is for you to clean it out. And now is the time when you really need to be efficient and clean things out and have an ordered workspace so that you can do more. We were talking about this in our group coaching last week, which is where I got the idea for this talk today, because this whole clutter of things is about, it's like flashcards. It's about memorization and there's cards here and cards there and concepts here and ideas here and how to do FLA writing here and how to do MPT here and photo reading and mind maps everywhere. That's really not what you're trying to do. You're not trying to memorize. You're trying to be able to access. And so if you clean up your workspace, it's going to help you clean up your brain space and your heart space. And it's going to help you access what you need as you need it. I can't find anything in here. I can't find anything in the stack of stuff I have in front of me. I have to go through it every time. So as you're cleaning up your workspace this weekend, I think I'm going to do it too, because it will help me be more efficient going forward. It has nothing to do with substantive law, but I know that when I did practice law, when I couldn't find things and things were all over the floor and things were in stacks, there's evidence that can get missed that way. There's law, important law that you need to read that can be lost that you can't find. And if you live your life this way as a mess, you're going to court as a mess. If you live your life this way as a mess, you'll go into the bar exam as a mess. It takes some time this long weekend. Maybe you have some time on Monday on Memorial Day and put on some dungarees and clean up your office. Well, no, I agree. Did you know what an organizational freak I am? And I do. trust me, guys, I just got home in Kentucky last weekend. And I am so scattered this week because not everything has a place yet. It, well, I like it to be. And thankfully, I had the forethought. I love these things. You know, I got these. Okay. Explainable file folder. But when I left Georgia, everything I needed, I put in a few of these. And they saved me yesterday when I had to have some evil work. I was right there. And that gave me peace of mind. And I know it sounds crazy, but having a plain space up and allows more to come in. How can something good come in if there's no room for it? I I mean, if I want more come in, I have to make space for it. And also, it's taking care of what you already have. If you're asking for more, but there's, you're not taking care of what you already have, why should you get more? June, you're the person that reminds me when holidays are coming. And there's apparently a holiday on Monday. Am I correct to that? Holiday on Monday. So I thought it might be interesting. I didn't tell Amanda I was going to ask her this, but Amanda, with a holiday day, when you're studying for the bar exam, what would you recommend to people? Should people blow it off as a study day? Should they study all day? Should they, what, what would you recommend? I think, it, you know, I think everything depends. Like if your family's getting together for a Memorial Day barbecue, right? Or you have kids that are off and you spend time with them. There's nothing wrong with that. I think you need to protect your study time 
like saying, oh, because 4th of July is another one that comes up, right? Big yeah. children holiday, yeah. big family holiday. And if you're like, yeah, I'm going to study, get up early, study from seven to nine, and I'm going to spend the rest of the day with my family. And if I read my mind maps at the end of the day, great. You don't need to say this is a day off. So I'm going to sit down and hammer out like as much as I can because I have a day off. I think we need the balance. And I think that balance is so important to keep us fresh, right? So even if you're someone who's working and studying for the bar exam, like I was just because you have, if you happen to have off from work, right? Take time to be with your family. It's important to also remember your why and remember that I think sometimes it's good to get that taste of, oh, this is what my life could be like now that I'm an attorney, right? So me, now I have unlimited PTO now, right? Like I can, but I got that taste right from the bar exam. Like, oh yeah, I'm not just grinding away at the bar exam now. So balance is key to everything, I think. So get that balance, right? Yeah. And Tracy, you would obviously recommend that people clean their workspace. Yeah. Get up at an hour. Get up at, yeah. Get up at six, clean up your office, and then study from seven to nine and see how much more effective your study time is. Yeah. But make good use of the time. Be, be intentional about how you spend your time. I think that's what both of you are saying is one of the frustrating things is I hear people say, I've got this date off coming. And then you get on the other side of it and you say, how did you do? What did you do? And they're, I don't know. I just lost the day. Don't lose the day. Every day matters right now. The clock is not your friend. If you thought it was, you're mistaken. And there is something about Memorial Day that really is, I think, for most people, don't you agree, Amanda and Tracy? It's when the calendar flips and people go, oh my God, there's a bar exam coming. And they suddenly jolt into action. And so be intentional about that day. And I know, Drew, you teach intentionality a lot about how to prepare for these kinds of times. I think also I am a big fan of microdosing. Yeah. I don't think we have to give up something for something. We're not give all of we can microdose. And I wish you some my calls. So if you've been on my calls, you're used to the brunch analogy. We had a student who was so upset that he could not do Sunday brunch anymore. And he was very upset about it. I had you can do Sunday brunch. But instead of a five hour brunch, we're now going to do an hour and a half brunch. Instead of eight mimosas, we're going to do two mimosas. And that was workable for their schedule. Mm -hmm. So again, you don't have to give up because that feels gross. Ugh, this is drudgering. I don't want to study. But if you're like, okay, I'm going to study this amount of hours, a week of hours in, then I've got this to look forward to. Yes, micro, not microdose your studies. Microdose other things. You don't give me into that. That family get together, work out, whatever. You, there's a movie you want to go see. So schedule yourself. Back your time for it all. The level update we will tell you about tomorrow. Give you the opportunity to sign up for that. And we hope everybody has a terrific and productive and safe week. If you're traveling, please be careful. And uh, we will see you again next week. And I will just tell you that's on the 29th of May. The world will look different to you. If you're taking the bar exam in July, it will suddenly feel like it is right there. So make good use of these next seven days. You'll appreciate that a great deal. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, June. It's good to see all of you. Glad everybody's here. Thank all of you who are with us, and we will see you next Wednesday. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.